Light Sleeper started in 1997. Here's the first flyer for the Light Sleeper radio show. So when I went to UH, DJ Dell was the first guy to offer me his art services. Everything was made on um, Microsoft Word. Name is Kevin Omo, also known as Kevin the Catalyst, KTC for short, owner, operator, creator of Light Sleepers. My really good friend became the general manager of KTUH, and he asked me to do um, a radio show. For 97 to 2001, two, we did the Light Sleeper show. Yeah, we're back on the air, KTUH 90.3 FM, Honolulu. All right. You know, I didn't want to play mainstream music. I wanted to just play Hawaii local hip hop, then underground regional hip hop, and then all the hip hop that wasn't exposed stateside as well as worldwide. If you battle me, you go on the food binge. That's just the way that a rock freestyle. And if you want 10 15 Throwdown was kind of like the starting of it all because I could see that Hawaii was hungry. Hawaii artists were hungry. MCs were hungry to perform, to express themselves on a bigger and public platform. I said, you know what, if the radio show worked for those good five years, what if I did events, but we just took it live to the stage? So when the show finished, I started doing events and that snowballed to a whole nother era of light sleepers. What up, my name is Tasho Pierce hip-hop artist from Hawaii, creative director for streetwear brand Flip the Bird. We're right here in the middle of Honolulu City. The studio where I did a lot of my work is about a block and a half that way. Jimmy Taco's Taco Shop, that's where we recorded Rhyme and Punishment, the opening act, a lot of my early albums. Hip-hop is the source. Hip-hop is where I get my powers. Hip-hop provided a lane for me to get to my dreams. And once that lane opened up, I was gone. I was able to go from listening to Run DMC to doing sneakers with Russell Simmons, from listening to Native Tongues, Wu-Tang, Kanye, to being in the studio, contributing and recording music. It's pretty much the ultimate fulfillment is to be able to like be in those circles with the gods. Every week another trip, coming back with a grip, for the habit to catch up to the quick, to the trip, down the rabbit hole, tabs look to the rip, to do the My latest album, H.I. Story, is basically a condensed version of my story as far as uh, my journey as a hip hop artist and as a person growing up in Hawaii. Aloha mai kako, o vau o punahele, no makaha mayao. I'm just a Hawaiian musician and hip-hop practitioner who loves to create music to strengthen my culture, community, and the environment. You know, I grew up in the hood, cutting class, going beach, raising fighting chickens. There was a void in my life. I feel like I thought and I felt in Hawaiian, but I had no way of expressing myself in Hawaiian. And I guess I found another language, which is hip-hop, which is rap. I had no money, but I always seen these battle rap tournaments. And every time there was a battle rap tournament, there was always prize money involved. Thought I was gonna lose the first night. I kept fighting and giving my all every single week after week. And I ended up winning. And with that money and the studio that I built, I recorded my first album, From Beneath Mount Ka'ala. Why you getting tribals if you didn't earn them? Game pass from OGs, that is how you learn it. Cut you off if you overstep your bounds. How can you be a boss? So I asked myself, what can I do to follow up with that? I feel like the purest thing to do that is a part of myself is to fuse these two cultures that mean so much to me, you know? I'm, I'm slowly and steadily learning how to use my own language, Hawaiian language, inside of hip hop. Instead of telling my problems, I wanted to show solutions for my ancestors to Mo'olelo and Olelo Mo'eao and just basic cultural history. So I decided to link up with my partner Otoro and we made the album The Menehune Giant together. Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Otoro. I'm a DJ, beat maker, and educator. My process is, I guess, the essence of hip hop where I sample something. You know, so the sample could be a feeling, it could be an idea, it could be just a drum beat or the type of snare. I was just looking, digging for records and then they had about 20 Japanese Inca records. 
And then, you know, the Inca sound and the chords are kind of like jazz, Ethiopian, Bollywood music also. And it was perfect for hip hop. My name is Sterling Higa. Uh, I go by Sans on the microphone and I'm a teacher and a writer. I started doing slam poetry when I was like 18 years old. I was always interested in rapping and writing raps in my room. And then through poetry, I met rappers and got involved in the scene that way. Scott cooks up the beat, he sends it to me, and then I usually write to it afterwards. So it's a organic interaction between his production and then my writing. Shoreline's actually started as an EP, but we wanted to do more, and then it became a full length album. The beats I wanted to do is the same kind of uh, Enka music, since we both have that Japanese connection. You have a story to tell. Everyone has a unique background and a story to tell. If nobody's gonna tell your story, you have to tell it because they're not gonna get it right. There's so many ways to tell a story, you just have to go out and do it. The life of the land is worth more than your dollar. Underground rap consciousness spreading like Uwala. Climate change is real and its presence is felt. Stop being P Lao and watch the earth heal herself. Stop doing damage, stop promoting healing. Cool air, because our kids really need you. Stop doing damage, stop promoting healing. Cool air, because our planet really needs you.